So let us start the, this second programming course. This course is intended uh, for people who already learned the uh, imperative programming basics uh, in Python. So uh, this is uh, intended uh, to be taken after CCPS 109, Computer Science 1, where uh, teaching Python in the imperative manner uh, in that uh, every problem is one function, there is no past, uh, giant uh, magic reset button gets uh, pressed uh, between the function calls. But uh, the CCPS 209, uh, this is now about uh, when the problems are so big that uh, they cannot be solved uh, with uh, one function, but uh, the execution has to be broken down into smaller pieces. So uh, this is about the uh, object-oriented programming. And uh, now we're using the Java language, uh, which the Java language seems to be on its uh, way out. It had a, had a good run. But uh, these uh, are ideas of object-oriented programming. So how do we organize the data so that uh, it, uh, we don't need to be repeating ourselves uh, all the time uh, is gonna be the grand uh, topic of the course. But uh, that's gonna be next week. So uh, as uh, week zero, so to speak, uh, we have a transition period where uh, we see a couple of examples how to do imperative programming in Java. So uh, the things that we did uh, with the Python in 109, we're now gonna be doing them in Java. And uh, I get to demonstrate uh, this uh, system that I like, uh, BlueJay. Uh, very simple uh, graphical interactive IDE uh, for Java programming designed for beginners. So there is only the buttons uh, that we actually gonna be needing. And uh, then Anybody uh, then who, who wanna learn used Eclipse or a similar professional IDE, so then is of course uh, more than welcome to do so. So in BlueJay, these uh, classes, uh, each class is an individual file. Uh, we're gonna open uh, the Python to Java here uh, in the editor and see. So let's uh, take a look at the difference between Python and Java. Whole bunch of little syntactic differences, but uh, remember syntax rules in all programming languages, same as in all languages, uh, all the rules are made up, but uh, then the underlying things uh, that uh, we don't get to choose freely, but they are chosen for us, uh, then, uh, then recognizing which one of those are same in Java and Python and uh, which ones are different. So a first, uh, li first little syntax thing, uh, the comments at uh, Java for historical reasons has two different comments, uh, one liner comment, so similar to the Python the hashtag uh, to the end of the line, and uh, then a long block comment uh, all the way from the 70s uh, C language slash and an asterisk starts a comment. Uh, these asterisks are just, uh, uh, they're, they're not uh, needed, they're just uh, added uh, by the GUI. Uh, for uh, con consistency and uh, the comment end uh, with the uh, asterisk slash. So two different ways uh, to make comment uh, take your pick. And same idea as in Python, not everything can be part of the language, so we'll import uh, in Python they're called uh, modules and uh, then in Java they're called uh, packages. Packages contain classes and uh, then other packages inside them. So uh, two variations. We're gonna be using the class uh, big integer from uh, the Java math uh, package. And uh, the one uh, this uh, already uh, showcases a really fundamental difference in spirit uh, between Python and Java. Python tries to make things easy and straightforward uh, for the programmer. Python represents integers internally using the appropriate representation based on the magnitude of the value, whereas in Java, the integer types in the language are uh, uh, fixed in size, and the big integer, this uh, data type as a class from the standard library, so this is now Python style integers whose uh, size is limited only by your available heap memory. 
and then from the util package, so make all the classes visible, so this doesn't actually uh, doesn't add all of this into the executable, just uh, tells the compiler that uh, when using some class, uh, see if it happens to be there, so this uh, convenient shorthand for importing the entire package. Now scrolling down uh, the structure of a Java program. So Java program consists of uh, classes. Now it's not uh, strictly speaking necessary, but one class per file uh, is a good thing. So here in the ID, each one of these is actually a, an individual file. So the file is always named the same as the name of the class with uh, the suffix uh, .java. So the source code uh, is uh, uh, English uh, text and uh, English uh, similar and characters as in Python, but then the actual executable, uh, when you compile, you have to compile explicitly, uh, then the executable becomes a class file in the director. Here is another, so this is uh, the graded labs, so if I implement them in Python, uh, no, no, so in Java, so can I get the language right? Uh, so at all these green boxes, so these are JUnit uh, testers, so BlueJ makes it very nice for this course that the, when we have these automated uh, JUnit testers, then we can just right click and uh, test all and uh, the test uh, passed with uh, the green check mark. And uh, I have a test, uh, tester class for each one of these uh, graded tabs. So BlueJ nicely integrates this together. I can run all the tests here with the, the press of a button. So uh, reading through the code uh, Python to Java, so uh, we already uh, saw this, uh, uh, this uh, imports and uh, the, the structure that the language forces to you one class per file and uh, the Java we notice it's a verbose nature. So a public class and then make up a name for your class and Java, so it has one thing going for it over Python that the naming conventions are standardized and the capital name means that you're defining a class, so class means a data type of your own, so data type called Python to Java and this camel case, so instead of separating words with underscores, uh, we uh, write the words together but capitalized uh, for readability. So this is just a convention. The Java compiler wouldn't complain even if you named this Python style with the lowercase letters and underscores, but uh, better to follow conventions so that the uh, people reading through the code, uh, uh, they, uh, they don't need to do the thinking step of uh, what, what is this thing now supposed to be. Next uh, difference in the, uh, the way that the, the nested things uh, inside the source code are uh, represented. In Python, the white space takes care of all the structure, so then there is no additional uh, structure characters needed, whereas Java so uh, this entire family of languages all the way from the C language from the 70s, sometimes it's called the curly brace languages because these curly braces, we're gonna be choking on them. So uh, to denote a nested thing inside another thing in the source code, we do still use indentation, but all this white space, this is only for the human eye. The white space, unlike in Python where it's essential, in Java white space is essentially meaningless. The compiler will simply skip the white space. The only relevant distinction is between zero white space characters versus one or more. So whenever there is one or more white space character, we can add a tab and a space and add a line break there and another tab and uh, compile, notice it didn't affect the compilation at all. Well, the edit, uh, here is the auto layout, uh, well, it, it, it wasn't smart enough to go across the line, so it's just better to have the indent, so the uh, auto layout here is gonna fix your indentation. The indentation just for the eye, the curly braces, uh, they, uh, they give all the information about nesting. So uh, theoretically you could write the whole thing as a one-liner, it is just a very horrendously long line, but of course don't do so. Okay, and then 
Uh, today we're not gonna do object oriented programming, we're just uh, gonna be doing functions like in uh, Python. So the concept that uh, corresponds uh, to closest to function in Python is a static method. So method, uh, so it's a function that is inside the class, so all of these are methods, Java doesn't have functions. But it is just that uh, when you make a method to be static, uh, somewhat historically, strangely named keyword, uh, don't worry about what it actually means now, but uh, this uh, is now a function as far as uh, we are concerned at the moment. A uh, couple of weeks uh, we'll see exactly what is uh, going on in here. And uh, this function is gonna be illustrating whole bunch of important differences between Java and Python, namely the explicit typing of the Java language. In Python code, the code is nice and compact. You never need to say what something is, because the Python program just treats data objects according to the methods, and as long as the objects have the capabilities that are needed, so the type doesn't even matter. So this is the Python duck typing spirit. As long as an object uh, walks like a duck and walks like a duck and looks like a one, so then we can use it as a duck and it's uh, fine. But the Java takes a very different uh, spirit. Uh, the Java, to understand the language, uh, Java language is designed to catch as many errors as possible during compile time. We don't have to wait for the testing and runtime to find them. And uh, this explicit typing that uh, in Java you can never have any data whose type isn't explicitly declared. And uh, this uh, rule is in effect everywhere, you cannot turn this off. And you have to declare the type of things, uh, even if it's uh, fully obvious from the context. Like for example this local variable result here. So it's an empty string. Notice uh, Java, uh, for the strings are double quotes characters are single quotes. Java makes a string versus character distinction that uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't show in the, in the Python source code. So even though we know that this variable is a string, in Java the string type is a class, uh, so then it's a capital S. So then you know that the string data type is a class. And this function, this method uh, promises that uh, whenever you call it, the result that you get back is a string, can never be anything else. So this method uh, can never return you a bank account integer uh, or a bird. So the compiler, when it's analyzing that all the data everywhere is used according to its type, knows that when there is a method called to the Ryerson letter grade method, that method is always gonna be returning a string object that can be taken to the bank for sure, or could also return the special value null, which is like equivalent to none in Python. So null, the special value indicating the absence of any object. And the same thing for the parameters. In Python it was just a gentleman's agreement that the functions are given the type of arguments that they're expecting to have. And in Java, so we say that if you call this function, you have to give it an int. So uh, why is this? So this is now what is called the primitive type. This is already getting too long. So I'm gonna talk about the primitive types in the next uh, video. So uh, the, this function, given an integer percentage, returns the string letter grade. So all the data, return types, parameters, lo uh, local variables, you can uh, explicitly say what they are, put uh, yourself voluntarily in this uh, leech of uh, li this uh, uh, of, of uh, the voluntary in leash, leash, l e a Yes, sorry, drawing a blank there. Please, uh, being a good dog and walking, not uh, running wildly around, uh, uh, touching everything with our with our boss. So then uh, uh, a couple of more syntax things. So uh, the, this two-way decision, most fundamental computational operation. Notice the difference in the syntax. Uh, the condition must have parentheses around them, even though there's no ambiguity there anyway. And it is not uh, the indentation. Well, we could have, whoops, could have indented 
to a different uh, uh, this will probably would be better style but it just feels annoying to waste this many vertical lines so uh, it still is gonna compile and run just the same but it is the curly braces that make the structure the indentation is only for the human eye the same principle as with the python the if else ladders notice that the java has else if not the elif and uh, the, whenever we're riding a step in the ladder, you can implicitly take it to the bank that all the previous conditions have been false. So uh, the A's and F's are special, they're handled in a special way. B, C's and D's in Ryerson, uh, they are, they all have a, a nice uh, consistent structure, but uh, some integer stuff here. Uh, integer because Java knows that these are both integers, so integer division is the same as the Python double slash integer division, and uh, well, cute, uh, clever is not always a compliment, so uh, deciphering what, uh, what we're doing here, knowing the tens and using the, the shifted tens as a string index, the remainder same as in Python, technically not the same, works differently for negative uh, uh, divisors, uh, Java uses the definition that's mathematically correct. Uh, Python uses a different definition that's handy when dealing with the Python style indices. So it, it is a, uh, this one uh, need to edit the comment. And uh, then uh, just uh, notice uh, the strings uh, in both languages are immutable, but uh, you can do concatenation to them.